Sometimes you just need to take the slips out and bowl defensively. And you also need to be careful with your computer's defense as well. If you need a VPN, go Nord. NordVPN.com forward slash Kimber to get a two year contract with a discount plus four extra months and gifts in some markets. It's completely risk free with Nord's 30 day money back guarantee. The link is in the show notes. So put in some dot balls and turn them into maidens via NordVPN.com forward slash Kimber. Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to episode 28 of the Crick Picks podcast. I'm Behram Kazim. You can find at Def Mango on Twitter. With me on one end is Estelle Vasudevan, who you can find at Estelle underscore Vasude, the number one on Twitter. And in for Jared Kimber as an impact sub this week and for two more episodes after this one is uh, Rob Barron from Cricket 8, who you can find at Monsieur Judge on Twitter. First of all, Rob, welcome to Crick Picks. Uh, are you excited to be here? I'm like a coiled spring, Bayram. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs> All right, well, let's see what sort of surprises you can spring up for us, because this is one of those shows. We always have um, some of those, uh, I don't know, hipster picks, rogue picks. I'm expecting nothing different today. And the topic for this particular episode of Crick Picks is the best T20 wicket keepers of all time. As always, it's going to be a snake style draft competition. So the pick order will go one, two, three, three, two, one. And pick number one will go to Estelle this week. So, take it away, Estelle. Yeah, I mean, this one's a pretty obvious one. I think if you look at players who've who've been in the T20 game for a reasonable amount of time. So, I'm going with Josh Butler at number one. Mm. I think he makes pretty much any 11 as a batter alone. And then you add his wicket keeping to the mix. Um, I wouldn't go too much into how good he is as a wicket keeper per se, because I think in what I've gone for, at least in this, in comparison to the test wicket keepers one we did, is that you need to be able to bat, right? If you're playing T20 cricket as a wicket keeper. So I think hmm. it's a pretty obvious pick at number one. I'm, uh, I'm guessing both of you also had him right at the top. I did, for sure. He was my number one pick. Yeah, I'm, he's I'm around. Not sure about Rob. But yeah, you're talking about someone who averages nearly 35 in T20Is and, and then he also strikes at, what, 145 odd. Joss Butler has all those gears to him. He can play that versatile sort of knock and dig his team out of a crisis. And he can go absolutely berserk, which is my favorite version of Joss Butler. Elite ramper slash scooper of the ball. Changed the game in that way as well. He was definitely my number one pick and I am low-key jealous that I'm <laughs> number three for this one. <laughs> uh, all right then. Uh, pretty safe, I'd say, for pick number one. What about you, Rob? What do you have for us? Well, it depends what you're after. Um, it depends whether you want a wicketkeeper or somebody that can bat and put gloves on because T20's gone that way now. We've got loads of people who aren't wicketkeepers but keep wicket and I think they just want to tell franchises that they can do that. Um, class and I'm looking at you here uh, he's a guy that literally doesn't even bother wearing pads so if you want to count him as a wicket keeper I'll have him please but actual wicket keepers um, all time like James Foster's probably the best I've seen um, being English like he was lights out um, to spin and pace and obviously England is a very difficult place to keep with all the swing we have here uh, so I would probably go him or if you want really rogue then out and out gloveman, it would be a glove woman, which is Sarah Taylor. Hmm. Um, well, she you're taking a lot of names over here, Rob, but you've got to give me just one. And the rationale can be whatever you want it to be. We keep it very well, open-ended in I want, a, I want a, a wicketkeeper behind the stumps. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to have James Foster. Okay, then. Interesting. Uh, you've left a pretty big name for me to come and just grab at number three. <laughs> and I'm surprised that, you know... I've I've gotten MS Dhoni as my number one pick. Yeah, because you can I, have the open goal, mate. Yeah, I, I, I honestly thought that the first two picks before mine would be Joss Butler and Dhoni, but great great on you for picking James Foster. I like you already. Um, <laughs> what, what else needs to be said about Dhoni that hasn't already been said in some other show or broadcast, right? I mean, he was a finisher supreme. 
uh, averaged over 38, struck at over 135. He's someone who mastered the art of taking the game deep and he would finish the job more often than not. Also an elite wicketkeeper, I would say uh, behind the stumps, you'd often see him pull off one of those witty moves where he would just like parry the ball onto the stumps and force a run out. And uh, he was great, uh, you know, keeping uh, to, to spinners as well. I feel like he is synonymous with T20 cricket. He's definitely like the biggest brand come, that, that's come out of the IPL. He is the IPL. And uh, I mean, he's the only Indian skipper to lift the, or well, what it was called back in the day, the ICC World T20. And now it's the T20 World Cup. So you get the leadership ability as well. You get big boy power and you get the genius behind the stumps. I think uh, for me, I was confused between Butler and Dhoni first up. I would have gone Butler for number one as well, but but I'm happy I got Dhoni. Yeah, Dhoni's another thing you can add is longevity, right? Hmm. Even now, um, I know it's not international cricket, but even in the IPL, you do see him pulling out that, you know, he can't bat more than two to three overs. But when he's hmm. ab able to come out to bat in the last over, he's able to give you those um, boundaries that you need. So I think long longevity is another thing that goes in his favor because he's been around for forever yeah. um but he's still able to do not he's not at his best obviously but still able to do some part of um that finishing job absolutely yeah, I, think, I mean um sorry no 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 go for I it i think i think Dhoni has uh he also has the big match mentality mm -hmm. uh he didn't do a lot in the ipl in 2023 but he still pulled off an amazing stumping in the final when he got Gill, didn't he? Set Gill, yeah. uh, reaction time 0 0.1 seconds or whatever it was. He's the best I've ever seen at stumpings. Like He is mm. absolutely top draw at doing that. Um, I think now he can still do the 16 off three at the end. Um, mm. He can hit bad pace as well as anybody. Uh, but his... Um, Agility is not quite there. And as somebody yeah. who's about Dhoni's age, I can totally feel that. <laughs> um, but he's still unbelievable at being a presence and a Dhoni, which yeah. nobody else has ever been. So, uh, yeah, if if I'm being completely serious, I think Dhoni would probably be my shout as number one ahead of Butler because I don't think Butler's a wicketkeeper. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I, I'm sticking with Foster because he is a wicketkeeper. Mm. And I would say... Very controversially, he's slightly better at wicket keeping than Dhoni is. <laughs> I mean, that's the beauty of Crick Picks, right? You can get to choose your own players, which a lot of people don't understand. But I like the fact that you've completely backed the whole wicket keeper skill part and gone for Foster. So it's Foster, Dhoni, Butler for Rob, guys. For, for those of you who are confused, that's the <laughs> order. And yeah, I mean, the longevity is really crazy. He's still playing in the IPL show. He's not the same Dhoni. Of course, he can't be at, what, 42, 43. But still a master of his art. And I mean... You can count on him to whack 20 runs off five deliveries still. Easy. Um, all right. I get my second pick in a row. And I'm going to go a bit old school over here. Some might agree. Some might not agree. I feel like he was born in era too early. Had he, you know, debuted a decade later, he might have been one of the best T20 batters or openers of all time. Forget the wicketkeeper part on his own. But I was also a big fan of his wicketkeeping. Perhaps not quite at that level uh, you know, amongst the best glovesmen to have ever played the game, but I'd still rate him very, very highly, especially his athletic ability. And as far as ball striking goes, Adam Gilchrist was an absolute phenom. Uh, this is someone who averaged 27 back in the day in T20s and also struck at 140. That is insane. You know, for the era that Gilchrist played, played in, he was striking at 140. And anyone who's ever watched him bat will know exactly what I'm talking about. He just, you know, goes up top and goes bang, bang, bang. He was playing modern day cricket before it had become, you know, the norm. And I mean, one of my favorite cricketers of all time as well. Uh, I had a few retro names over here, but I just thought that, you know, he, I'm going to lose him, you know, till my turn comes again. So might as well go for Adam Gilchrist first up. Plus, I, I, I'm a sucker for left-handed batters and bowlers. So there's that. You you know that I love Gilchrist, right? But mm -hmm. I didn't have him on my list. Damn. I just felt like, yes, potentially he could have been a great T mm. Twenty wicket keeper batter, but he didn't really play enough, right? Uh, I mean, but yeah, I mean, you get to pick, you get to make the rationale. Yeah. But I'll, I'll give you rationale. He has an IPL title as captain of the Deccan Chargers, the second IPL. So that's good enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'll tell you what else he's got. He's got an IPL wicket. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> and one of the best celebrations, right? I, I'm, yeah, I'm, I, think so. I was so disappointed we missed that in the wicket celebrations episode. Mm. Yeah, that's an all-time celebration. He was um, gangman styling all over the place, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so that's my two picks in a row. Dhoni and Gilchrist. I, I think I'm going to win this already. But we go back to Rob for his second pick. Yeah, I think you're going to win on uh, names. And I mean, Gilchrist changed the game of cricket mm. is what he did. Um, yeah. In, in all three formats, really. Uh, so I can't argue with Gilchrist. Um, I've come at this at a much more orthodox wicketkeeper angle than somebody who scores loads of runs. So I'm definitely going to lose if run scoring counts. Um, if you want old school, I think Boucher was really good. Um, oh, he was oh, probably oh. a few years too early. But he was one of the first um, reliable white ball kind of number seven stroke eight. He did, he did number nine sometimes for South Africa in that lineup. And he was really good at the finishing role before the finishing role was a thing and he was also a very very good wicket keeper um because they had so in his time they had bowlers that sprayed it all over the place they obviously had some absolute class acts who could move it um you know he kept to stain he kept to entini he kept to andre nell who could bowl it absolutely anywhere um and some very strange spinners um adams springs to mind robin peterson all sorts of characters he had to keep to but his batting was really fun and he was one of the first to kind of start with the invention start with a few um he wasn't a scooper and a ramper but he would play all around the wicket and get on with it at the end which not many people did back then so okay. yeah voucher wow so i'm gonna give you some very different from here. jared Kimber, yeah, right? <laughs> I, I really i really wish jared was here for this because he would have like literally taken a dump on you live on the show that's what he did to me when i picked boucher in my test wicket keepers and uh, yeah he basically said that boucher only had his job because there was no one better in south africa at that point yeah, to, so to keep wicket <laughs> most of what i say is to try and annoy jared Kimber. so if i can get if i can get that over the line then i've done my job all right then uh, pick number 2 for rob baron was mark boucher and now we're back to estelle for two consecutive picks, and I feel like she's going to take all of the people that I want because that's what she always does. <laughs> I'm surprised you haven't picked the Pakistani with two consecutive picks, Vera. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going with Alisa Healy as my mm. second pick. I think amongst players who've really had like really had time in T20 cricket, she's I mean hands down the best wicket keeper batter in the women's game that that we've seen um and even if you compare with both men's and women's cricket the amount of runs she's got and the games where she's made those runs are you know when you talk about clutch she is one of those clutch players right hmm. and i think her wicket keeping doesn't get spoken about a lot there are the odd chances that go down and odd stumpings that go down and i think you know rob mentioned sara taylor i don't think she's anywhere near as good a wicket keeper as Sarah Taylor. But as the full package, wicket keeper batter, I think you can't you can't really compare anyone else in the women's game, particularly because there aren't that many hmm. I, I, I can think of just one other player who's probably as good a bat uh, who also keeps for her team. So uh Elisa Healy, another easy pick for me, I think. Yeah, no, that definitely checks out if you're definitely like I mean if you are going to go towards women's T20Is, then she is the first name that pops up to mind. And now she's captaining Australia as well. So you've got the leadership abilities as well. Anything to add over okay. there, Rob? No, I don't mind it. It's the uh, <laughs> the second best women's wicketkeeper, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, no arguments there. Obviously, Sarah hmm. Taylor's, I would actually say Amy Jones is a better keeper than her. But as like the full T20 package as a batter and hmm. keeper, um, I would pick Healy. Anyway, number three for me. This is where it gets a bit tricky, I think, because there are so many kind of in a clump, right? Player, uh, wicket keeper batters. And like Rob mentioned, there are so many who aren't really genuine wicket keepers, <laughs> uh, but kind of can keep a little bit and have been used okay. as such. Uh, I'm going to go with... Um, Quinton Decock. Okay. I think he's dominated 
that top order for South Africa for years. He hasn't had the best of runs in the last year or so, but he's been that constant at the top of the order, making runs, putting teams under pressure. Um, again, longevity is a thing that he's mm-hmm. had in his favor as well. He's played for a long time. Um, just, just a, just a really valuable player to have in your lineup. I feel. Yeah, I think reliability is kind of, um, or it comes hand in hand with Quinton de Kock. And he's served South Africa for such a long time at the top of the order. He's still getting, you know, IPL deals. And I mean, on his day, he can give it a proper whack. I know at times we see Quinton de Kock anchor as well. But I feel like he is at his best when he has that sort of liberty to just, you know, go bang, bang. And I mean... Uh, for someone who has done that job for so long for South Africa, it's not like he's regressed an awful lot either. I mean, he's maintained that standard for a huge chunk of his career. And he was on my long-ish list because, I mean, okay. um, recently, well, he hasn't been at his best. But overall, you look at his numbers and he's averaging nearly 32 and striking at over 137. So, uh, sure shot. I mean, I would have been really surprised if he had gone unpicked in this entire episode. Mm. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> All right, then. Uh, I think, Rob, you have another turn and then I will have two consecutive picks. So go for your pick number three. Yeah, I think De Kock's quite a good shout because mm. he's one of the few on the franchise circuit now that is actually quite good at wicket keeping. Mm. There's loads of good bats that keep wicket that aren't any good at wicket keeping. So yeah, I don't mind De Kock as a shout. So I'm going mega rogue for my last one. And we're talking the best T20 wicket keepers. And I ignored um, marginal gains like the ability to bat or captain or have a personality and stuff like that. <laughs> there was a fella called Michael Bates who used to keep wicket over here. Played for Hampshire in a few of the blasts. And he averaged 10 with the bat at a strike rate of 98. But he got picked. Hampshire used to do funny things. Um, They won it back in 2010, I think, in that really funny final against Somerset. Um, But Bates was an out-and-out wicketkeeper, utterly brilliant, tiny, could get all over the place. Um, to tend to Taibu was going to be my other rogue one. But <laughs> yeah, Michael Bates was an actual wicketkeeper. And uh, as far as Glovemen go, he's up there with Foster as people that are properly good at wicketkeeping. If he has to go in a winning T20 team, he's not in the conversation at all. But you asked me for wicketkeepers and that's what he is. So Michael Bates, come on down. No relation to Susie or Norman, I hope. I don't, I don't <laughs> think so. <laughs> all right, then. <laughs> Uh, these are extremely rogue. I, I like that. I, I'm very I'm interested to see what the comment section is like uh, on this particular episode because we've got some really ruthless people who watch this show. <laughs> come and always, come at me, people. <laughs> yeah, always slagging me off or Estelle off, and never Jared though. He he's always kind of you know so survived maybe it's that. Rob's turn this time. Yes, maybe yeah, it they, is they Rob's clearly turn. don't know Jared well enough if they're not slagging him off. <laughs> All right then, uh, pick picks number three and four for me. Uh, This is tough, man. There's so many people who I want to kind of fit in there. And uh, yeah, you guys didn't pick any of them. (laughs) So (laughs) now it's uh, put me in a really tough spot. And I want to go with someone who also changed the game and is continuing to change the game in a different format as coach. Uh, He was the one who kind of, you know, lit the IPL light or whatever, like first game ever. Uh, He played for the Kolkata Knight Riders, smashed over 150 runs. Uh, He's also someone who was extremely agile behind the stumps. He was a live wire, whether he was, you know, wicket-keeping or in the field. Uh, He's someone who completely lifted the spirits of an entire nation and probably is the reason why New Zealand cricket is still competing at such a high level. Uh, Baz McCullum, he's going to be pick number three for me. Uh, As I mentioned earlier, that ton that he scored for Kolkata versus, I think it was Bangalore. Yeah, Royal Royal Challenges Bengaluru uh, in the first ever IPL game. It kind of set the tone for that tournament as well. And then he's just had, you know, such immense impact on the sport at large. Not to mention T20 cricket as well, right? Such an illustrious career in the Big Bash, which people often forget. And uh, he came to the PSL and even though he might not have had those sort of performances, every time I interview one of these guys like Fakhar or someone from that Kalandas team, 
uh, they always, always mention the influence that Baz McCullum had on them. Uh, someone who would charge down the track versus Seamers, which is an amazing sight in cricket. Absolutely love that about him. And I mean, he was uh, the definition of gung-ho. That's what Baz McCullum was. He was an absolute delight to watch and uh, averaged nearly 30 as well in the format, uh, striking at just under 137. Not quite that Gilchrist strike rate, but I mean, of that particular era, those were the two keepers that were kind of tailor-made for T20 cricket, I feel. And uh, he's played more T20 cricket than, than Gilly as well. So yeah, he's picked number three for me. Yeah, no, I mean... Yeah, that's another one you can't argue much against, right? Because he, like you said, just the striking ability he had and the mentality he brought to the game. Mm. I mean, I know it's not T20 cricket, but in, in the 2015 ODI World Cup, the way he kind yeah. of lit up that tournament, just that mentality he brought, um, it did shift the game a lot, right? So, mm. yeah. Good choice, I think. You, you've been good today. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think I have a winning uh, three thus far, but still two more picks to go. And for pick number four, I have so many names over here. Honestly, like, I don't even know where to go with this. Um, man, I'm going to I'm gonna annoy Rob over here. I'm going to go Heinrich Klassen. I don't care about the wicket-keeping. <laughs> that man is hitting those back foot straight pulls, and he's got that arc versus uh, good length delivery uh, of spinners. And I think that he is a disruptor. Uh, if you look at the last two and a half years, the way Klaassen is striking the ball is probably like unheralded. It is unprecedented in many ways. And uh, this man's true strike rate when we were do doing all the research was like way ahead. Like he was quicker than every other player during every single phase of the game. And it's not just that he's a spin basher either. He can hit pace. He just smashed Bumrah in the IPL as well. Um, sure. Maybe you can, you know, throw in the whole batting first versus batting second thing over here because I feel like his batting first record is, is better. But I I am in awe of Heinrich Klassen. I think he is someone who is speaking currently. And uh, I don't know how long this speak will go on till. But as of now, from what we can tell, uh, there are very few other cricketers or batters in world cricket who can strike a better or longer ball than Heinrich Klassen. Uh, sure, uh, maybe the peak isn't long enough for him to make it, but I mean, this is quick picks after all. The biases come through at some point, and I'm I'm pretty comfortable with having class. And I mean, man strikes at nearly 153 in T20s, and his average is also touching 33. So go argue with that. I, I'm not going to give any explanation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, would you like me to do the arguing? Yeah, yeah. Go <laughs> ahead. Tell me. Tell me just how annoyed are you at that pick of mine? So, so you broke up a bit there, Bayram, which I think is um, for the best because you've asked me to come on here and talk about wicket keepers, and you've ended up talking about somebody who is like going to be in the world eleven for batting, but he's a wicket keeper that can't keep wicket. Have you watched him keep? Like he doesn't even wear pads; he just stands there and hopes that the ball hits him. Like a traffic cone would do about the same job as Klassen as a wicket keeper, so he can't be in the conversation of best wicket keepers in T20 cricket because he isn't one. He's a he's a really really good bat, and all the stuff you said about him being good at batting is correct. <laughs> um, but he's just a man that wears gloves is all he is as far as a wicket keeper goes. I mean, I'm not going to say that he's an elite wicket keeper. He's got the neck, the size of like both my biceps combined. Uh, but then again, that is what he does in the team. He does keep wickets, so he qualifies. At least in my books, he does. <laughs> Firepower. That was, that's what I was going for when I was, I was making my list. Uh, but anyway, Rob, you've got pick number four now. Um, I want uh, to tend a tie boo for mine. <laughs> uh, an another guy, I, I really like small <laughs> wicket keepers because they're funny to watch, if nothing else. Um, he also played in a team that was... I mean, T20 is a bit of a stretch because he hardly played it. But he's another one of those where I was thinking about wicket keepers and I just went through everybody that's on the circuit. I can list them all, but you know who they are. You go through all the, the wicket keepers in this World Cup. You think, who's good at wicket keeping? Not many of them. Like Butler's fine. Salt's atrocious. Gerbaz is really funny. Like there's loads of, you know, he throws his legs in the air every time he catches it. But who's good at wicket keeping? Like De Kock's okay. Puran's okay. I mean, who's good in, in India now? Sanju? Probably. Like, Sanju's quite good. But 
none of the people I've just mentioned had the same uh, similar impact on the game as um, Tatenda Taibu did with the with the gloves. Um, he, he had to play in a bad team and lift them all up, which he also did with the bat. His strike rate would be absolutely terrible when you're talking about T20s <laughs> um, because he was coming in at, you know, 10 for three a lot. Um, but yeah, um, I'm sticking very much to my um, guns of being utterly rogue with these selections. So let's go Taibu. Um, but you're always going to win if you're just going to pick batsmen that can smoke it everywhere. Because you could you could start talking about Richard Pant, who could be somebody who's very, very good at wicket-keeping. But it's not as fun as saying Taibu, so I'm just going to say it again. Taibu for me. Yeah, I wonder how, how many T20s he played. Yeah, hardly any. He's um, uh, in the coaching staff of one of these teams at the World Cup. I saw him. I don't know for which team, but I saw him. Possibly, uh, yeah, yeah. Maybe he yeah, was he's played he, about... He, 17 games, I reckon. Okay. T20. But he, he was, I mean, a really fantastic keeper, wasn't he? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, a, another proper gloveman. When it mattered that you, you know, we've gone away from that. And I think we'll go back to people wanting wicket keepers. Um, I think there will be room for them again soon. Everybody seems to have decided right now that you just have any old bloke um, or girl behind the stumps that wears gloves and that'll be fine. <laughs> um, but if you pick the right one who can also bat and do something with the bat, um, the value of wicket keeping and getting getting the stumping at the big moment and not clanging it like Klassen always will, having Dhoni <laughs> there that can still do that now, can still catch the ball and take the bails off. Um, Rizwan's very good. Rizwan should have been mentioned by now. He's a good wicket keeper and he's really good at T20 batting. That would be a sensible answer, but I'm not here for sensible. I'm here for Tatenda Taibu. <laughs> So there you go. Yeah. So it's interesting. I feel like whatever format we picked, you were going to go for these particular guys. Because for you, you know, you're the impact sub. You just want to create this whole furor that I went for these particular wicket keepers. And yeah, that, that's, that's why I feel like you, you woke up and chose violence today, Rob. Yeah, chaos. Um, chaos yeah, is what I'm Absolutely. Here for. Uh, anyway, Daibu, interesting okay. one. My Estelle, last you, two, right? Yeah, you have to finish up now with your final two. Yeah, I'm very surprised that like, you know, I struggled to put down 15 names. I'm very surprised that so many of them are still on, on yeah. the list. And obviously, Rob's not going to agree with any of the people I have remaining. Mm. <laughs> but these are the guys that I've put down. Uh, I just have to pick two out of them, out of the so many that are remaining. I'll go mm -hmm. with, um, I'll go with Puran at number, at, as my number four pick. Mm -hmm. um, again, he is a decent enough keeper, but can be one of the most destructive batters in mm -hmm. the game uh, at the moment. So I think he kind of, I thought he'd be gone in the top <laughs> five to six names, but um, happy that he's still still remaining. And I'm happy that Rob has gone with the proper wicket keepers and yeah. left us with some of the easier picks. Yeah, it's hilarious, isn't it? Uh I also thought like Nicholas Puran would be one of the first few picks uh, because he is that kind of batter who can literally take the game away from you. Like when he starts hitting them, he just doesn't stop. You, you'll see those, you know, 30 ball 80s every now and then with Nicky P. And I mean, what? His average is around 27 in T20s and he strikes at what? 146 odd. So destructive, yes. Best keeper or glovesman? Probably not. But then again, uh, I feel like if you look at the history of T20 cricket, you're going to need the full package as opposed to what Rob believes. And Nicky P fits that bill, left-handed to top it off. Uh, I'm happy you took him, Estelle, because I was confused between him and Klaassen. And I was like, <laughs> some of these guys are going to just get left behind now because Rob has picked none of them. <laughs> so, yeah, let's see how this uh, progresses. But, but you've got your final pick now. Yeah, I'm very interested to see how the next episode we are going to record goes. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, my last pick, um, Rob mentioned him before as well as a funny wicket keeper. I'm going with Gurbaz. Mm. I think he's, he's kind of been one of the forerunners in the Afghan team's success in the last couple of years. He's provided that stability as well as quick scoring at the top of the order for them, which they did have in some shades with Mohammad Shazad, right? But mm. he had lots of issues with fitness and stuff like that. And there was never really that amount of uh, stability. But since Gurbaz has come in, that's allowed them to kind of build a batting order that 
has taken them in fact they are in the super eights of the world cup right has has brought them so much success i mm. don't think he's a terrible wicket keeper i think it's it's like like again like what rob mentioned before right if you look at this world cup you don't really have like exceptional gloveman right because the game has moved beyond that where you have more guys you you pick a guy who can kind of catch the ball behind the stumps as long as he can bat then you're good with that right uh, i think he's he's an average wicket keeper i wouldn't say he's bad i i don't think uh he's he's at classen's level right <laughs> um, but a uh, really good bat at the top of the order can really and i think one of the the kind of the real franchise finds right he's played all, ar- all around the world pretty much every franchise tournament so uh i wouldn't have wanted to see him not in this 15 because i think he's 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 had a huge impact for the team he plays for yeah it's really interesting you've gone for him because i had like three to four guys ahead of him i know that gurbaz is young and exciting and he might be averaging just in like the mid 20s or whatever but his strike rate is touching 150 right which is quite insane and and he seems to be really coming of age in the ongoing t20 world cup in in the usa and caribbean i feel like maybe Five years down the line, he had a case to make it, but for now he was on my long list. He was like in that Phil Salt category, you know, for me, uh, in and around there. I did not, I, I, I still have so many names ahead of him. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, Rob picks one of them because he did mention his name. Because I'm not, <laughs> I'm not leaning there. I'm not leaning no there chance. at all. Yeah. So Rob, go ahead, do the honors. Final pick for you. Sure. Um, Estelle, you were really close then. You nearly said Mohammed Shazad, which would have been the correct <laughs> answer for Afghani <laughs> wicket keepers. Like, uh, none of the none of these people exist um, if Mohammed Shazad didn't do it first. He he's tiny as well. He's like five foot three mm. or something. Uh, he looks quite a lot like me, which is definitely a good thing for a wicket keeper. Um, I like characters. Uh, he has had loads of issues, didn't he? Um, So, uh, like a bit of a clown, Mohammad Shazad. He was so fun, though. He didn't quite break the franchise circuit. I think he had a couple of goes in the Bangladesh Premier League and one PSL go by Ram. I think. I think so. Um, maybe maybe uh, Zalmi signed him, but they had Kamran, hmm. didn't they? Yes, I don't um, think he got much game time, or, or if any at all. Like I can't remember. Yeah, I th- I think he goes very well in my stable of rogue people, um, hmm. and I love him. uh and i i got i was a massive um afghanistan fan when they first came on the scene um they had loads of characters um they had uh you know face paint on and shenwari getting really angry with everybody um you know before rashid khan was was a name at all nabi was doing it uh they had and no one embodied the the chaos of afghanistan more than this guy mohammed shazad and he could keep wicket he did lots of fun things behind the stumps he was all right at wicket keeping um but he's yeah i could sit here and go through you know i could say risa pan or i could say you know no one's mentioned like wade or inglis or any of those aussie guys that are okay mm. um but again none of them are anywhere near as fun as mohammed shazad so let's have him please and if you if you're just going to keep saying batsmen that wear gloves i'll have suyu kamal yadav Thank you. <laughs> and he's better than all the other ones you've said. I'm sure he's kept wicket before. But I'm going Mohammad Shazad because he's a wicket keeper, he's tiny, he looks like me and he's funny. Well, wow, so I have four names over here which I was so sure would all get picked and now <laughs> I'm left with these four guys and have to pick one, which is so so cruel guys. Like this is this is not on. This is not fair. He he's picked and- Mohammad Shazad after going on this entire rant about how he's going to go <laughs> for like proper wicket keeper or or glovesman and now he's picked up Mohammad Shazad. So <laughs> really kind of it's it's the Shazad uh, was the only one in my list <laughs> that I put down from from the five that Rob has picked. Yeah. Yeah. Shazad is the only one. <laughs> exactly. He was part of my long list as well but He yeah, went you can, for like you can have Chris Reed. It's fine. Yeah. Chris Reed's all yours, Bayram. You had all of the rogue <laughs> hipster picks, uh, like guys who could actually keep wicket, and then you you did the anti rogue rogue pick with Mohammad Shazad. So, uh, yeah, you you did choose chaos. <laughs> That's definitely correct. All right, four names. Who do I go with? Who do I go with? This might surprise a few people. Um, I'm going to go Luke Ronkey. Yeah. Uh, I feel like back in the day uh, when T20 cricket was still like it was not quite in its infancy 
it was somewhere in between the infancy stages and wherever we are in, in the modern day. And Ronky would come and open the batting and he would strike the ball, you know, faster than anyone or any other batter around at that time. Quite a decent glovesman as well. I feel like he was very, very reliable behind the stumps. And someone who perhaps, you know, matured a bit late. And uh, I felt like his peak was a bit short-lived. But those final few years, Luke Ronke was an absolute beast. You know, uh, he was on top of his game. He had cracked the code in international cricket. Didn't quite do that for Australia. But when he came into New Zealand and had that late bloom, he was absolutely fantastic to watch. I mean, the average in T20s is what, 25.25? Not amazing, but he's striking at over 153. And this guy does not play in this current era of T20 cricket. So I've gone for him for that very reason. Uh, Rishabh Pant misses out. He was part of those four people that I was talking about. Mohammad Rizwan was, of course, past part of those four people, as was Dinesh Karthik. So all of those guys miss out because I just could not not <laughs> pick Luke Ronke. Like, he was just that big a player in that middle period in T20 cricket for me. And I feel like he's one of those guys whose names should be remembered, but a lot of people will just forget who he was. And that's very, very tragic. How, how many games did he play? Can't be that many, right? I mean, it can't be that few either. He, he did, you know, survive for quite a long time. And plus in the PSL, he played for a bit, was fantastic for Islamabad United. Uh, I remember him playing some extremely explosive knocks for New Zealand as well. Like, he was pretty damn good in a black jersey. But I don't have his uh, number of games handy. <laughs> I do have his number of games handy. He, um, 204 T20s right. he played. Um, 33 of them were internationals. Mm. He did play PSL. He played CPL as well. He actually played for Mumbai, um, would you believe? Yeah. And he's played Big Bash. He's played pretty much all of them. Mm. I quite like him as a shout. Um, my main thing against, so I love the mega super intent of Ronke, um, but he was so, so vulnerable first three or four balls. Um, he was almost like if he could have cracked batting from a cold start, he's somebody that should have been in like a cage next to the ground for an hour before the game started and come in a bit warmer because he got so many first, second, third ballers and he was a massive run out candidate early because he needed to get some runs before he was okay. So but when he got going, interesting story he, he over was here. done. Sorry, sorry to interject, but sure. I think Jair is the one who actually told me the story is that what he used to do to get rid of those early nerves is that he used to just go on and, and strike a ball, you know, go for a big shot. And whenever he would nail that first big shot, that's when he would become unstoppable. On other days, he would get out. So... That was his coping mechanism with that nervy early period that you're talking about. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's exactly what he used to do is just try and hammer everything right from the start. And I loved that. And he would he would get in some of my teams because you're not allowed to play unless you, you have that attitude um, if you're going to play for one of my teams. Uh, he did play for two of the, the bigger countries, which I'm not a big fan of either. I don't like that. Um I don't like the way cricket allows this phenomenon of playing for several different countries. Like when Dirk Nanes was gunning it for the Netherlands and Australia went, okay, we'll have you. You look good. And I know you're going to say, well, Owen Morgan, by the way, <laughs> like stop playing for loads of different countries. You're not allowed to do that. So Ronke wouldn't get in my list because he played for Australia. And, you know, that's bad, obviously. But playing for Australia and then New Zealand or, yeah, doing that. Um, no, I don't like it. Hmm. All right, so we're done with all of our picks then. And uh, let's talk about some honorary mentions. Of course, I'll come to you in the end, Rob, because you're going to give us some some interesting names over there. <laughs> but Estelle, who else was on your list? Yeah, so I had Rishabh Pant as someone hmm. who I thought would be picked. Yeah. In this, if, I, if I, Jared was here, Rishabh Pant would have definitely would have been picked. picked him. Yeah, yeah, hundred <laughs> <laughs> percent. <laughs> yeah, 100%. I also had Risha Ghosh, I think another one mm. uh, from the women's side of things who yeah. is a capable better as well as mm. good with the gloves. Um, uh, I had Rizwan and mm. I am shocked that he has not been picked <laughs> because he is a very good keeper. And yes, people are going to talk about his strike rates and stuff, right? But I think you have to also balance it out. He's mm. averaging 50 something, right? In T20 so eyes, yes. Averaging 50 and then scoring at 130, I think, is not not really that bad, right? Hmm. I mean, sure, you want someone who's scoring 
at about 145, 150. But how many of those players do you have? So I was very surprised that uh, Rizwan went unpicked, especially since you always pick a Pakistani player <laughs> and you haven't this time. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I wanted to prioritize impact, but I'm not taking anything away from Rizwan's record. I mean, this is a really bad time to be Mohammed Rizwan because Pakistan has, you know, uh, exited the T20 World Cup in the first round. Mm. But you look at even his overall T20 numbers, show the strike rate is low. It is below 130 actually, but the average is up. And as far as anchors go, he has been one of the most successful ones. So he was on my long list, but I honestly thought that someone's going to pick him because all of the other names that have missed out in my head were going to get picked. Like Rishabh Pant, uh, Rizwan. After that, I had DK. I thought Dinesh Karthik was a really, really good shout, even if he hasn't had that sort of success for India. Uh, in all T20s, he's been spectacular. Uh, I'm not sure if AB counts, right? Even if he has kept a fair bit, but I mean, AB is primarily a batter, perhaps. Yeah, yeah. Uh, similarly, I don't know if KL Actually, Rahul Actually, Wade counts. also has a decent record, yeah. right? I do you think, laugh at the fact that th Australia played him in that last <laughs> World Cup, but uh, he He's has still a playing. pretty decent record. Yeah. Wade is playing in this World Cup. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that you can argue that's on the back of, you know, the performance yeah. he had in 2022, right? But in yeah. 2022, he was just... Nobody knew what he was there for. And then he yeah. ended up winning them the... Was it the semi-final? Mm. Uh, that was 2021, right? Sorry, 2021. Yeah. Yeah, in 2022, he was also around in 2022 and in 2024. So Matthew Wade has uh, survived the test of time one way or another. Uh, even though Josh Inglis is around, he was also in my long list. So Wade and Inglis were way down for me. But I guess Wade probably has a case for being higher up there. Uh, because he can also bat in multiple positions, right? He's not really restricted to... Uh, a, a particular spot in the batting order. But for me, Pant, Karthik, Rizwan, all of these guys should have gotten picked at some point. Uh, KL Rahul is an interesting one. Of course, his uh, batting is the subject of a lot of scrutiny in the IPL and, and for India. But I feel like he's not the worst guy around, right? Uh, he's still very, very capable. And then you've got your Phil Salts, Devin Conway's, uh, Wade, Inglis, um, Tim Seifert is another name, but I don't think he's like best 15 of all time, not even close. Sam Billings is, is an interesting one. He's played a lot of T20 cricket, isn't half bad at it either. Uh, Johnny Basto, perhaps, I'm not sure. <laughs> and uh, I don't know, if you really want to go deep, uh, this Kamran Akmal as well. Maybe not the wicket keeping, but at one point he was a really good ball striker. Those were like all of the guys I could think of. But uh, yeah, that pretty much uh, is, is my long list. What about you, Rob? Who else did you have? Um, lots of old English people. Um, I thought, as as far as wicket keepers go, I mean, no one said Sangakara. He did a lot for the mm. game. Um, I mm. think you look at Rizwan, and, and I discounted him. He was one of the first names that came in my head as currently playing good wicket keepers mm. who actually do a lot of other stuff as well. Like Rizwan is a very good fielder when Azam Khan has to wicket keep. Um, his wicket keeping, I think, is really good, Rizwan. The the fact that he strikes at 125 counts him out for me. Um, I know he kind of has to, but I really don't think he does have to because Babar's in the same team and you don't need two of them going at 120, um, as they've proven yeah. in this World Cup already. Uh, so, hmm. yeah, Rizwan didn't make it, but he was definitely on the list. Look, if you want to go route one, you say Dhoni, you probably say AB, um, who I'm surprised we didn't talk about. Because uh, AB was absolutely fine behind the stumps, he was as good as any of these these yeah. uh, the the guys on the circuit now. He's as good as De Kock or Puran or or you know he's a million times better than Klassen. Um <laughs> But I don't think many of us think of AB and think he he was a wicket keeper. Um, I think we've we've gone through all the names. Um, I've obviously gone a bit left field with most of mine, but I'm absolutely sticking to that. I, if Tony wasn't in the, in the conversation, we'd be we'd be having the wrong conversation. Um, I think De Kock is one of the better ones now. Sanju's pretty good. He's a good wicketkeeper. Um, Sanju Sampson. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. I think we've covered everyone really. I don't think there's going to be people screaming. You haven't said this this guy or this girl. <laughs> oh, there will be. <laughs> Oh, always. <laughs> there is always that one person who says you didn't take XYZ's name. But yeah, Sanju Samson is a, a terrific shout as well. I had him in my long list. Uh, anyway, I'm going to repeat everyone's top five, uh, starting with Estelle. She chose or drafted Joss Butler, Alyssa Healy, Quinton de Kock, Nicholas Puran, and Romano Lagurbaz. Rob picked James Foster, 
Mark Boucher, Michael Bates, Tatenda Taibu, and Mohammed Shehzad. So you guys can go make of that list whatever, like as, as you please, <laughs> whatever you may feel like. And uh, Behram, I chose MS Dhoni, Adam Gilchrist, Baz McCullum, Heinrich Klassen, and Luke Ronke. So let us know in the comment section below who you think won this bout of Crick Picks and why you think it was me. And uh, thank you so much uh, to everyone who watched this episode. And uh, just a quick reminder to everybody that you can go and bookmark goodareas.co, which can be your one-stop shop for all the work that we do as part of this team, uh, whether it be written content, podcasts, or videos. And if you enjoyed this particular podcast, give us a like on YouTube and subscribe to both just this channel and Jared's other channel on YouTube. We'll be back with another episode of Prick Picks next week. That is all for now. Goodbye. If you make any content, Minbo Pro is the tool for you. Take your long format content and cut it and slice it for social media. This AI inspired weapon will turn your one piece of work into so many clips. Try Minbo.pro now.